All right, students, so today we're going to start learning about the lathe. Last week you learned about the vertical mill. You can already see here from taking a look at the lathe that it's a lot different from a vertical mill. Instead of a tall, thin machine, you're going to have kind of a long, flat, squat machine. What the lathe does is it's great at making circles because what it does is it actually turns the piece that you're cutting as opposed to the vertical mill. We'll see that in a little bit here. So the vertical mill holds your piece in place while the drill turns. The lathe does the exact opposite. It turns the piece and it holds your tool steady on this end here, which we'll discuss in a little bit. What we first want to start out with, though, is tool safety. Again, we've been stressing that all semester. It's the most important thing when you're working in a classroom with dangerous tools. With a lathe, you have to worry about the normal things you worry with with any other tool. Are you wearing protective eye equipment? Is your hair back if you have it? Are you wearing any jewelry on your hands? Do you have any loose sleeves on your clothes? Do you have anything loose around your waist that could get caught in any part of this tool? You always want to make sure of that. And again, I want to remind every, all the students that you can't be listening to music, no cell phones. If your friend or even I come up and talk to you while you're working at the lathe or any other tool, turn it off or ask me to wait until you're finished with what you're working on. The safety of the machine and yourself come first and everyone else comes second. So besides the general safety precautions for working at a machine, we want to talk about the, the safety specific to using a lathe. All of the safety components on lathes should be marked in red. In this case, you can see that they clearly are. We have the emergency shutoff button. We have the clutch lever that turns the device on and off and we have an emergency brake le lever at our feet here that we can use. I'll demonstrate these shortly here for you. So if I turn on the device, first by resetting the emergency knob, like on many machines, I have to pull it out and twist it to turn it on, turn it on again. Now I have the ability with the clutch lever to pull it out and up. This turns the device on in a clockwise fashion. Similarly, if I turn it off, wait for it to come to a complete stop like you would with the vertical mill, I can pull it off, turn the lever down, and now you can see it's going in the opposite direction, counterclockwise. This is very useful to us because turning clockwise and counterclockwise can result in different patterns of wear as we use our tools and turn the device. So now I use the lever for the first time to turn it on and off, but I'll show you the emergency stop with the brake lever here. I just slam my foot down. You can see that the chuck has come to a complete stop and that the device is no longer engaged. This is confirmed by the fact that I no longer have two green lights on on my headstock. I just have one. Before I could start it up again, I would have to turn the lever off. You can see that it's still engaged in the downward position, so that if I try to turn it on, nothing's going to happen. So first I have to reset the lever. Now I can turn the device on again. All right, so we're gonna dive right in here to the parts of a lathe. I want you guys to know what a lathe is, how to identify all the major components, so that when you come to class on Monday, we can jump right in and start you guys having working on it. The biggest component that you'll see here is right on the left. This is called the headstock. The headstock has your motor, it holds the tool piece, it's the most important part of the machine. It's called the head because it holds your piece. To the right side here, you'll see we have the tailstock. You can remember the tailstock because the tailstock holds your tool. Tailstock with tool, your head holds your piece. Then thirdly, we have your carriage, and finally, we have the bed here. So now we're gonna go into a little bit more depth about the headstock. You'll see that every type of machine is different. So what I'm showing you here in this video is specific to this lathe, but we're gonna use terms general enough that they apply to most machines. So as we said, this entire area is called the headstock. The piece that actually holds the part that you're turning is called the chuck. 
This is called the chuck because it has these adjustable jaws here on the right side that turn in and outward and hold the piece that you're actually turning. To do that, you're going to use this chuck key here. The chuck key just fits in and turns clockwise to close it and counterclockwise to open it so that you can put your part in there. Now this is super critical and I want everyone to remember this. Your chuck key, you always want to remember where it is before you turn the device on. If I were to leave this in here and then turn the device on, you could seriously injure yourself, damage the machine, or hurt somebody else in the classroom. So always make sure to never leave this in the device. Always take it out and either leave it on top of the headstock, or better yet, put it on the work table behind you here. So now that we have the chuck and part of the headstock, you'll see that we have a lot of imposing looking dials here. These control speed, they control lubricants, they control a lot of things. I don't want you guys to worry about that. I'll be controlling the speed for most of your applications, and as we go further through the course, you'll learn more about changing the speed yourself. Either way, for now, just leave the levers alone. All you guys need to remember is that your emergency stop is here and that your on button is here. If all of the lights are off, you need to reset the device by twisting the knob outwards and then pushing the green button to turn it on again. All right, so this portion is called the tailstock, also sometimes referred to as the ram, kind of from its motion here, like the CSU ram, ram it forward here. So what we have is, this is gonna hold your tools. You can either do that with a chuck or a variety of things that you can mount to the tip of this here. But what the general idea is, is that you can either put it in a position and lock it in place, or you can gently feed the tool forward to start boring pieces in your lathe. What you always want to pay attention to, if you can come back around here, you want to pay attention to your locks. Your locks are always levers. Adjustment devices are always spindles. In this case, this top lever here will lock your ability to advance the tail stock. This bottom lever here will lock your ability to move the ram at all. It's always a good idea to lock your ram in place before you work on any tool. If you don't, it's a danger risk to yourself and you can possibly destroy the piece that you're working on. So everything that you see down here, basically from these rails and below, is called your bed. On top here, you see these long metal pieces. This is called your bed, and this is what allows travelage, traveling of the carriage here. You always want to make sure that you're keeping your rails and your bed as clean of debris as possible because it keeps your device in tip-top shape. It's always okay to let debris fall down here. This is what it's meant to do so that your debris doesn't end up on the floor. The next part, this is called your lead screw. It's important because this is what controls the travel of your carriage. This is the most important piece on your lathe in a lot of ways because a damaged lead screw can mean that you have no accuracy in the traveling of your carriage. When you don't have any accuracy, that means you don't know how close you're drilling, how close you're cutting. All right, so this final component is called your carriage here. Like the vertical mill, machinists love to use animal or kitchen terminology when talking about their tools. This part that covers the bed here is called the saddle because it sits saddling over the bed. This part that drops down the front here is called the apron. The apron because it's in front of you, like you would wear an apron. And then sitting at the very top, this is your compound rest that holds your cutting tool. It's called compound because it moves in two different directions. You have linear motion going back and forth, and then if you unlock these bolts on either side, you can twist it so that you can begin cutting at different angles. It's always very important that just like your levers on your tailstock, that you tighten 
the nuts down on your compound rest as well whenever you begin to turn a piece. So now that I've kind of given you an introduction to the parts, I'm just going to briefly go through them again because in class I want you to know that when I refer to a part, you know what I'm talking about so that we can begin to create our own pieces in the classroom. I'm going to start with the right side of the device and move to the left. This is your tailstock or your ram. It's called your tailstock because it holds your tools. This long area here is the bed of your device. It has the rails or the tracks on it upon which your carriage travels. On your carriage, you have three major components. You have your saddle that sits across the bed. You have your apron that comes down in front of the bed and you have your compound rest at the very top of the carriage that allows you to mount your tools, move them back and forth, and if you need to, even swivel it side to side. And coming to the left here, you have your headstock. The headstock has the chuck where you hold your piece. It has the motor where all of the power comes from. It has your emergency stop and your startups. And don't forget, if you ever need to, you have your emergency brake down here, and to turn on the device, you use the levers on the right side here. Turn it up for clockwise, down for counterclockwise. As always, because this is a video, you can rewind, watch it again. I don't want to rehash everything too much, because I know you guys are watching this at your pleasure, and that you can go back to any part of it you want at any time. When you're done, please go to the Google form at the bottom of the page, take the brief quiz, I need to know before tomorrow, do you understand all of the parts of the lathe? And if you have any questions, make sure to fill out the comment field. I promise to read all of your questions before class starts so that we can eliminate any confusion. And at the beginning of class on Monday, we're gonna start making the parts of your pen holder. Thank you.